<laughs> Today's video is about a few things, but mostly it's about how much work tomatoes are to grow in a large capacity. Um, we are starting our fall harvest for the garden and the greenhouse. And as you can see, I did really well with tomatoes this year. All the tomatoes that are along here, I pulled out of the garden. And I'll show you how I did that in a minute. Um, there's so many, they just didn't ripen on the vine and I was worried that they were gonna frost. We haven't had frost yet, but we definitely have frost warnings coming. Temperatures um, are dropping. Temperatures are dropping. So I wanted to salvage all these amazing tomatoes that I grew. We've got everything here. And not to mention, I've got all the stuff on the vine still here in the greenhouse. So what are, what are we going to do with all these tomatoes? <laughs> well, if they all ripen, the next step is to can them. Can them or freeze them. They I will. They will ripen. I hope so. Maybe not out here, but inside. Yeah. So to, back to the point about tomatoes being a lot of work. If you, I'll link the video in the description. So first I grew them indoors from seed. Um, then I brought them out, baby, basically babysat them out here. So hardened them off. So I took every little plant and brought them out for a few hours a day and brought them back in inside at night just to get them used to the greenhouse vibes <laughs> and temperatures and light. Uh, and then I planted them all. And I had so many plants, I thought I was only going to do them in the greenhouse, but I ended up putting a whole bunch out in mm -hmm. the garden as well. Next year we need a better garden plan. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but these ones I trimmed, which I highly recommend by the way. Keep, keep your, don't let your tomatoes go crazy. Trust me, don't let your tomatoes go crazy. <laughs> Trim them. If I was to give you any advice. Um, I let the tomatoes in the garden just go bush tomatoes and boy, that was a bad, bad idea. We should go see those, but before we do, can you show us over here? Yeah, what do you want to see there? Ooh, the sun's coming. The herbs. And it oh. smells like, I wish the everybody could smell in here. Too. I know, it smelled so good this morning. Mm -hmm. So another part of our fall harvest um, in today's video is going to be about... Um, salvaging all of these herbs to be able to use for the rest of the season or the rest of the winter. I started out making this video thinking that I was going to dehydrate these. Because James got me a dehydrator at a flea market for $20. And I actually went ahead and um, picked a whole bunch, put them in the dehydrator. But I also took some and I hung some up just in my pantry upside down to air dry. and the dehydrator did not work for herbs. So I don't know if I did it wrong, but I don't recommend that. Um, so I'll show you how I'm going to do that later as well. And yeah, everything else is, we've had a lot of videos about the greenhouse, but everything's still doing really well. I have so many green tomatoes here and I want to try to salvage them so I'm loading them all up into a box and I'm going to bring them to the greenhouse. James laid down some wood planks for me and then I'm just going to lay them down there and see if I can vine ripen them in the greenhouse.
Just like clockwork. Cue the chicken. Oh, come back, guys. Oh, here comes an indigo. This is all going to actually the garbage, sadly enough. Oops, I'm gonna have to make out the salvage. It's a whole little bundle, actually. Um, yeah, this whole pile is. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't believe that you can compost old tomato plants. I heard that you have to burn them or I don't even know what, like you, they're not good to be repurposed into soil. So please tell me in the comments, correct, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'll wait to do anything with them until I hear. your first time. You tell everybody.
I was just down here deadheading some of these uh, marigolds and I noticed this bee. So I saw, I think it was this bee yesterday. She seemed bigger um, and I think it's a queen bee because it's got the diamond on the back. So, oh, yeah, <clears throat> she's got that dot on her back. It's kind of way I, it's sort of early morning and I am picking some herbs to hang up to dry as opposed to dehydrating. The best time to pick herbs for the purpose of drying or dehydrating is in the morning because that's when it has most of its oils gone to the leaves. Um, if you do it later in the, in the evening after the sun's hit it, they're not as potent. So I've got some sage and some oregano here and I'm gonna go into the greenhouse and show you how I just simply tie them up and hang them up to dry. Action. Okay, so we've got our oregano and our sage from the outside garden. And I'm gonna pick some basil. And I think I'm gonna pick some parsley too. So parsley here, we've got tons of it. Uh, I'm not gonna do all of it right now because we still have a little bit of growing time. I just doing it for the sake of showing you the people. Okay, so I've got a little clump like that. I actually got a little bit of oregano in there too, which is totally fine, because in the end I'm gonna mix everything together into kind of like an Italiano mix. Uh, and then basil. You don't wanna pick anything that's gone to seed, because the flavor's just not gonna be there. Them long and I'm cutting them with a bit of a stem on so that I can hang them. The size of those onions. I know. They're so good too. Alright. That one's going to seed. I think I have enough for the purpose of showing. <laughs> <You're a duke. laughs> yeah. Jeez. All right, we need some close ups here. All right. So we'll start with. Where did I put my scissors? Oh, right there. Start with the basil. Come inside instead of standing out there and whining like a weirdo. Come on. What are you doing out there? Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Bob. There he is. Hey, Hi. Bob. What are you doing come out on. there? Come on. Come on this way. Bob. Come on. You're acting funny today. Is it Jojo? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so just have regular twine. I'm going to cut a little piece. I'm going to wrap it around a couple times, tight as I can. Make a little knot. I think that'll hold. And then I have uh, twist ties. I'm going to loop the twist tie through the twine to make a little hook. Crafty. Yeah. And then 
I'm just going to hang it on the edge of this basket. Give it a little squeeze there. That's how you merchandise herbs. <laughs> it's one way. Is that enough? Nope. Next, we'll do, um, let's do the sage. If you have enough twine, you can do it twice. But I think it'll, yeah, no, it's not really gonna work. Okay, twist tie. I just take the herbs and hang them on a basket like this and then put them in my pantry to dry. They usually take, I don't know, a few weeks, I guess. I have some oregano here from a few weeks ago. And what you do after this point is you just grab a jar, just crumple it with my fingers. other oregano here. Voila, so you do the whole thing. Cover it in an airtight jar. Label it oregano. <laughs> Let's talk about herbs in the morning. Ooh, ooh, ee, ee, ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cut. We can use that as a book. We've got some visitors. Cows right outside the door. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a little bob print in it. Sit down. See, they 
وقت بیرون هست چیف کن خیلی